What if there were a source of energy that was plentiful and it could produce lots of power without taking up much space and without producing any carbon dioxide? Do you want that? Let me ask the audience. Do you want this form of energy? Okay. But I'm talking about nuclear power. Nuclear is the only carbon-free source of energy that could come close to replacing the energy produced by coal, oil, and gas. But it's nuclear. Nuclear is scary, as the Japan earthquake reminds us. The nuclear nightmare appears to be getting worse by the hour. Fear that a meltdown at one of the nuclear reactors in Japan may be underway. What started as a natural disaster has the potential to become an even more threatening man-made disaster. An even more threatening man-made disaster? What's he talking about? I mean, he's a friend of mine from ABC. We actually are partners in a restaurant together, but he's just wrong about this. <laughs> in Japan, 18,000 people died in the natural disaster. The nuclear plant killed no one. Some workers said they feared they'd die within weeks because of the radiation exposure, but they haven't. After the Chernobyl explosion, we were told there'd be thousands of cancer deaths. There haven't been. The United Nations says there was some increase in thyroid cancer, which is treatable, but no clearly demonstrated increase in the incidence of solid cancers like lung cancer or leukemia. Nothing anywhere close to the thousands killed by the earthquake in Japan. But our foolish media quickly switched its focus from the natural disaster that killed 18,000 people to threats from the nuclear plant. Nuclear just scares people. And this week, Japan announced it was scrapping its plans for more nuclear power. So does this mean we'll have to find other ways to keep the lights on? Here to discuss this is energy journalist Robert Bryce, author of Power Hungry, the myths of green energy and the real fuels of the future. So what are the real fuels of the future? Well, John, I think clearly nuclear has to be part of the answer. Um, it, I'm, I'm adamantly pro-nuclear, even in spite of what happened at Fukushima. It was a serious accident. But as you point out, you have <clears throat> 18,000 people dead, they believe, maybe more, 10,000 missing, $300 billion potentially in damages, and yet we hear very little, in my view, from the media about the extent of that disaster. Instead, we have had this incredible focus on the nuclear accident, which is serious. And we, but the reality is, we have to get good at nuclear. The this assumption is that well, we, you know, we won't always be good at nuclear and a worse accident, the meltdown, the China syndrome, the mass disaster will happen. Sure. And, we, and we've heard this for decades. But in my view, John, if you are anti-carbon dioxide and anti-nuclear, you are pro-blackout. You just love darkness. Uh, it, 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 in the, real, the reality is today, the world needs electricity and it needs a lot of it. We have uh, over a billion and a half people living without electricity globally. And, and electricity growth is, is growing dramatically worldwide eight, by 80 percent over the next 20 years, by, according to the IEA. All right, well, we got coal, oil, natural sure. gas. You could do it that way. Well, perhaps, but I don't think we have enough of those resources. And even if we did, we still have to deal with the other externalities of those of those sources. The the, the thing that makes if global clear, warming is a problem. If if global warming is a problem, but still with coal, you have air pollution issues. You have the coal ash disposal problem. You have mining deaths from coal mining. The thing that makes nuclear so compelling is the incredible power density. You cannot approach, approach anything, no other energy source approaches nuclear when it comes to power density. And I can give you the example here, we're here in New York. Indian Point is a, a nuclear it, plant just north of in here. In Westchester, it, two reactors produce 2100 megawatts of power. If you wanted to use wind turbines to produce and that And the environmental much, zealots say, we've got to close these exactly. nuclear plants and, and your governor has said that we need to close uh, Indian Point. If you wanted to produce He's that, the brother of that friend of mine who is in the restaurant. The restaurant. Me, the, the what way. was the name of that restaurant, John? Um, <laughs> no plugs. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to produce 2,100 megawatts, just produce 2,100 megawatts of capacity, not actual dispatchable generation, 2,100 megawatts of wind generation capacity, you'd have to cover nearly the entire state of Rhode Island, 800 square miles. Indian Point. To replace Indian to Point. To replace Indian Point, which covers 250 acres. Uh, that, that's why nuclear is so compelling. But it's not compelling to most Americans, people are, and the media is so scared of the radiation. Let, let's just put the risk, some of the risk from radiation sure. in perspective. Nuclear radiation is measured in millisieverts. 
7.2 millisieverts is the worst day in Tokyo since the accident. 10 millisieverts is the average CAT scan. So we're exposed to this radiation all the time. I, I should say my father, when he was a kid, his father, my grandfather, was one of the first dentists to use dental x-rays. And sure. my father on the weekend would go to his office and hold the plates. <laughs> Uh, he was 12 years old. He sure. lived to age 92 and died of something else. Uh, but, but that's the, the irrationality about the fear of, of radiation. We, we hear about radiation poisoning all the time. Well, tens of thousands of Americans have radiation poisoning every year. It's called sunburn. This is part of what uh, this misunderstanding because radiation is invisible, we can't see it, and millisieverts, microsieverts, people don't have a, 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 a way to even understand that. But so it they seems too flip to say you know, nuclear accidents, tanning lotion. Well, sure. Um, but the reality is, as you point out, w for all of the devastation in Fukushima, there were three workers that were killed at the plant. One was hurt by, uh, killed apparently by a crane. Two drowned. None have been killed by radiation. And, w and here in America, 20% of our electricity comes from nuclear. Globally, it's on the order of 10 to 14%. This is an irreplaceable part of our electric generation capacity in the U.S. and globally. We cannot do without it. So, why doesn't the free market just make it happen? This is what bugs me about nuclear. Sure. It gets subsidies, too. And the companies say, we're not going to build them unless government, President Obama, you guarantee us a loan. Sure. And well, government shouldn't be guaranteeing private businesses stuff. Well, and, and that's a fair point. But in this, in this, in, on this issue, I believe that the value of electricity to society is so great, and the value of cheap, abundant, reliable electricity is so great, that you have to have governmental involvement. Further, you have to have governmental involvement. Let me finish. You have to have governmental involvement to deal with the waste issue. You can't say, here, BP, for instance, or Halliburton, we trust you. You're going to have to have the government involved in the waste management of, of these facilities. The spent fuel rods spent to be fuel put rods, somewhere. And that, by necessity, requires a strong governmental in, 